Hello and welcome. Today we are going to deal with geography chapter Our Changing Earth. Lithosphere is broken into number of plates known as lithospheric plates. Let's learn a little bit more about it. Now if you have not already subscribed to this channel, do that and let's get into this class. The movement of the lithospheric plates causes changes on the surface of the earth. The forces which act in the interior of the earth are called as endogenic forces. And the forces which act on the surface of the earth are called as exogenic forces. Let's move forward. What are endogenic forces? As I said, they are forces which act on the interior of the earth. Now this is what happens. When the sudden movement occurs, it causes earthquake and volcanoes, which leads to mass destruction. Now what's a volcano? It's basically a vent in the earth's crust through which the molten material erupts. And what are earthquakes? When the lithospheric plates move, it creates vibrations, which are called as earthquakes. The place in the crust where the movement starts is called as focus. And the surface just above the focus is called as epicenter. The greatest damage happens usually near the epicenter. And the strength of the earthquake decreases away from the center. An earthquake is measured with a machine called as seismograph and the magnitude of the earthquake is measured on the Richter scale. An earthquake of 2.0 or less can hardly be felt. An earthquake over 5.0 can cause a little bit of damage. Earthquake over 6.0 is considered as strong and above 7.0 is classified as major earthquake. Earthquakes cannot be predicted but we can take precautions. First, find a safe spot. Second, stay away from the fireplace and glass windows. Third, very important one, be prepared. Spread awareness among your family members and friends so that we are ready to face the disaster at any time. Be prepared. Let's move forward. Let's look at the major landforms. Now the landscape is being continuously worn by two processes. One is weathering and the other is erosion. So what's weathering? Basically breaking of rocks on the earth's surface. And what's erosion? It's wearing of the landscape by different agents like water, wind and ice. Now the process of erosion and deposition create different landforms. Let's move forward. Let's look at work of a river. First we have waterfall. When the river tumbles at a steep angle over hard rocks or down a steep valley side, it forms a waterfall. And I'm sure you have seen waterfall a number of times in your life. Next we have meanders. As the river enters the plain, it twists and turns forming large bends. These are called as meanders. Let's see what are Oxbow Lake. Over a period of time, meander loops cut off from the river to form a cut-off lake, a separate lake, which are also called as Oxbow Lake. Next we have flood plain. Now when flood takes place, it deposits layers of fine soil and other materials called as sediments. This leads to the formation of flat, fertile flood plain. Let's look at the next one. Leaves. The raised banks of a river are called as leaves. As the river approaches the sea, the speed of the flowing water decreases and the river begins to break into number of streams known as distributaries. The river becomes slow so it deposits its load and each distributaries form its own mouth. The collection of sediments from all the mouth forms a delta. The collection of sediments from all the mouths forms a delta. Imagine this is rock 
and the waves are constantly crashing on it. What will happen? The rocks will develop cracks in it. Right? Now, over time, the rock will be a little hollow, forming a cave. This is called as sea cave. In some more years, the cavities will become bigger, leaving only the top portion of the rock, forming sea arches. After some more time, only the rocks will be there. No caves, no arches. These are called as stacks. And the steep rocky coast rising almost vertically above sea water is called as sea cliff. Let's look at it one more time and then we move forward. Cracks develop on rocks and over a period of time they become hollow forming caves. These are called as sea caves. After some time these cavities become even bigger and only the roof of the caves remain forming sea arches. Let's look at the next one. The wall like features are called as stacks. The steep rocky coast rising almost vertically above the sea are called as sea cliff. Let's move forward and let's look at work of ice. Glaciers carve out deep hollows and when the ice melts they get filled with water and become beautiful lakes in the mountains. The material carried by the glacier such as rocks, sand and silt gets deposited. These deposits are called as glacial moraines. Finally, let's look at work of wind. In the desert, you get rocks in a form of mushroom shape. Why? Because the lower portion is eroded because of the heavy wind and only the upper portion remains, forming a shape of a mushroom. Hence, they are called as mushroom rocks. Now, the wind blows and sand is transported. And the low hill structures are called as sand dunes. When the grains of sand are very fine and light, the wind carries it over a very long distance. When such sand is deposited in a large areas, it is called as loess. So that's it for today. See you next time. Take care. Thank you very much.